Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be telling you where you can find resources to learn Blender now that 2.9 is available. This is essentially a follow-on video from one I made just over a year ago called The Best Way to Learn Blender 2.8. What we'll be covering is the best places to find free and paid content, as well as how much of what was shown in the older video is still relevant. Now in this past year, a lot of new features have been added to Blender. With that being said, I will be repeating a certain amount of information said in the previous version of the video but I'll also be adding some new information about new content that's appeared throughout the year and also providing more in-depth information on the different platforms available. So with that being said, let's start with a fundamental question, which is, should you learn from 2.7 and 2.8 content? The answer is yes. However, I suggest you start learning Blender using 2.8 beginner tutorial content before touching anything from 2.7. This is because the 2.8 content is still highly relevant to 2.9 versions but the 2.7 content is only partially relevant. And what I mean by that is since the user interface was massively changed in version 2.8, a lot of functionality had moved places. So tutorials made for 2.7 versions, 2.79 being the latest one in that series, are confusing to follow if you're using 2.8 and onwards. So my suggestion is to start with 2.8 content, work your way up to understand the 2.9 features, and once you've got a fundamental understanding, then take a look at 2.7 content and study it see if you can extract the theory and the fundamental valuable core concepts that they contain. So to get started, if you're brand new to Blender, the first thing I recommend you do is take a look at the official Blender channel on YouTube. There you will find a playlist for the first steps. This was made for 2.80 and as I say, it's still highly relevant. This is a good introduction because it will explain the core concepts behind Blender's design. It will introduce you to the user interface, how to make things, how to edit things. It's just overall a good introduction. Then I recommend after having your first taste from the first steps, you should take a look at some of the favorite community created content. Right at the top of the list is the donut tutorial from Blender Guru. Now this tutorial is famous within the community. Essentially, Blender Guru made a donut tutorial for earlier versions of Blender. It was incredibly successful on the platform. So when 2.8 came along, he remade the tutorial with some extra content so that it was relevant for the new versions. Now loads of people have followed this all the way through and there's even a dedicated subreddit for Blender Donuts. So this tutorial series has become a bit of a cultural phenomenon within the community. But as well as that, there's also some other creators that did some pretty good content for learning Blender 2.8. Notably, some of my favorites are Grant Abbott, Jan Sculpts and CG Fast Track. Now I think it's always a good idea learning from different teachers because they will have different teaching styles and you may resonate with one more than another. Also, some teachers might miss certain things out that others won't, so it's a good idea trying to cover as much ground as possible. So yeah, the same subjects will be covered, but as I say, it's a good idea learning from multiple teachers. And look, it, this content is free, so it doesn't cost you anything to watch. So I highly recommend you look for YouTube. And another thing to keep in mind is that I'm sure there are so many more beginner tutorials that have appeared in this time that I just don't know about. So if you go to watch some of these videos, keep an eye on your YouTube recommendations. Because one lovely thing about the Blender community on YouTube is that everyone recommends everyone else's work because it's relevant to the audience. So if you're following a lot of beginner Blender tutorials, you will likely be recommended more beginner tutorials. So you can actually keep an eye out and see if there's any new content for yourself. Now since 2.9 is out, and if you are a beginner, there's something I recommend you do before and after learning the fundamentals of Blender 2.8. And I'll explain what it is and why. I think that you should take a look at the official feature breakdown video for 2.9. Doing this will familiarize yourself with the new features that are available, even if you've never touched Blender before. I think if you're excited to learn Blender, seeing these features will give you an extra motivational kick. But of course, if you've never touched Blender before, you may not understand exactly what these features do. So that's why I recommend you also take a look at it after you've learned the fundamentals. So keeping that in mind for now, we're going to come back to this part of the presentation. These are examples of free videos, but what about paid courses? Well, let's take a look. There are multiple benefits to using paid courses. First of all, you likely get dedicated support from the creator. This is something you won't always get on YouTube or other areas where there's free content being made. The creators feel like they have more of an obligation to reply to people that purchase their content. So you're more likely to get a response if you need help if you're using a paid course. You can also be pretty sure that there's going to be a consistent quality of the videos and resources throughout the entire course. This is typically because creators know they're going to get paid for the content, so they will spend more time on making it a higher quality. This is again because on YouTube content is being thrown out for free and AdSense is a ridiculously unreliable source of income. So creators may be more inclined to just throw stuff out without spending as much time on the quality. But this really depends on the type of creator. 
because if you look hard enough, you'll find some gems. For example, in Light VFX, otherwise known as Jacob Holiday, he spends a lot of time making really high quality professional tutorials. They're really nice to watch. In reality, there are a lot of YouTube creators that are producing high quality professional content that they could sell for money if they really wanted to, but they don't because they're generous and they want to give it back to the community. Another consideration for paid content is that it's well curated for an optimal flow of learning. And what I mean by this is that the content is typically structured in a better way. When content creators sell educational courses, they're typically specialized towards a certain subject, even if that subject is beginner content. Now this means that the course content is focused on that subject, whereas on free content on YouTube, content creators can freely jump around multiple subjects quite rapidly. So if you're trying to focus down and learn one specific thing, that can be a bit annoying sometimes. And lastly, paid courses can sometimes be hosted on a dedicated platform or website. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's take an example of where you can find some paid courses. One of the obvious ones that comes to mind is Udemy. Now this website is known for doing lots of sales on courses and they have quite a large variety of content. But there are some upsides and some downsides to Udemy that we'll talk about in a minute. There's also Teachable sites. Now Teachable is like a framework that lets creators sell course content online with a lovely interface that helps their users track their progress. And with these in mind, some creators exist on multiple platforms. So you may find some YouTubers that are producing free content on YouTube that are also producing content for Udemy or have their own websites. So an example of this would be CG Boost. So CG Boost is owned by Zacharias Reinhardt. His channel used to be called Zacharias Reinhardt. He produces free content for the YouTube channel. There's also an interview on there with yours truly. But as well as having the YouTube channel, he also has a dedicated website called cgboost.com or academy.cgboost.com for the Teachable website. And you can see here that if you're signed up to one of the courses, you have access to the library of all of the videos, you can track your percentage completion up in the corner, and it tells you what you have and what you haven't done. There's lots of downloads, and on each of these videos, you can enter a discussion thread where you can pose questions to the creator. So it's a high quality bespoke site for following the educational content. Now in the last version of this video, I gave my highest recommendation for the Blender 2.8 Launchpad course. This is still relevant for 2.9 and I still highly recommend it. This is available on the CG Boost website, but I will leave links below. Another thing that's worth doing if you're looking at paid content is looking up a bit about the creator. In this case, as I said, CG Boost is owned by Zacharias Reinhardt and he's very well known within the community. He has strong community connections, he's been making content for a long time, he runs his own community and challenges, and as a result of this, this gives him a sense of being trustworthy. Essentially putting all these things together and the professionalism of his business, I can say for certain that he knows exactly what he's talking about when he's teaching content. And he does it in a very visual way that's quite similar to how I like to teach content as well. So this is an example of learning content that you can use to help you learn Blender 2.8 from a trusted reliable source that provides both free and paid content. But let's talk a bit more about Udemy. So Udemy is interesting because it has quite a large variety of content, but this has a side effect of making it a mixed bag of paid content. Essentially, the quality is quite diverse. Some courses are excellent value, whereas some, in my opinion, are a bit overpriced for what they actually provide. And as I said before, some content creators that make videos for YouTube also produce content for Udemy. However, because there's a variety of content, a significant number of those courses may be outdated for 2.7 versions. But on the plus side, just like with CG Boost website, Udemy does have a way of tracking your progress through the different courses, and a nice interface for following along. So that's another benefit for the paid content. But this brings us on to Gumroad. Gumroad is a website that lets creators sell digital and physical content. It's got quite a large educational community. And Gumroad is typically a really good place to support your favorite teachers and creators. And the reason for this is because their commission rate is excellent. It's pretty much the best out of any digital distribution website. However, in regards to educational content, the main downside is that it's missing some key features that we've seen in Udemy and dedicated websites like CG Boost, which is where you can have a dedicated interface where you can follow along with the course, track your progress, communicate with the author, and so on. But as I say, Gumroad is still an excellent platform to support the creators. But to go along with Gumroad is a special website called Blender Market. Now Blender Market, as per the name, is a market where you can buy content specifically made for Blender. So this includes educational content, add-ons, assets, and so on. Now there's lots of really good courses on here. Just some to name are multiple courses by Gleb Alexandrov and AD Burroughs, for example, Hard Surface Modeling, Space VFX Elements, and Hard Surface Rigging, which I think has also been assisted by Blender Pirate. Another notable one is Real-Time Motion Graphics by Mitch Sinave. 
Now I've recommended this on the channel before, but this is not beginner content, so why am I recommending it? Well this will bring us on to something that I call technique focused courses, but we'll touch on that a bit more in a minute. Just keep in mind that when you're looking at websites like these, some of the content is made for 2.8 plus, but some of it is a bit outdated. But out of these, I might be wrong, but real-time motion graphics is for 2.8. I think Heart of his rigging is. I think Heart of his modeling has mostly 2.7, but with some 2.8 features. And I think Space VFX Elements is exclusively for 2.7, but I'll need to check up on that. But this goes to show that content creators are quite often interested in adding new content for new versions to old courses as well. This is beneficial for them because it allows them to keep marketing the same courses for new audiences. But now we're moving on to subscription services, and yes, just like Netflix and Disney+, Plus, the Blender community does also have some of its own subscription services. The first notable one to keep in mind is the Blender Cloud. Now signing up to this one directly supports Blender development, because it's run by the Blender Foundation. Inside of here you will have access to content from the open movies created from the Blender Animation Studio. There's also some exclusive courses and resources. One notable one that I want to point out is the Procedural Shading, Fundamentals and Beyond series by Simon Thomas. Blender is excellent at procedural shading and material construction, so if this is something you're interested in getting into when learning Blender, then I can recommend it. The Blender Cloud also has some free content that you don't need to have a subscription to download. For example, here's a demo of the Sky feature that was added in Blender 2.9. If you go to the page, you can just go to the download button and click it, and then it's yours. So it's a very nice service, basically if you want the exclusive content you can go ahead and sign up, but there's also some free stuff that you can download and study for yourself. There's also another subscription service called CG Cookie. Now they've been producing educational content for quite a long time, but they've been very fast with producing new content for 2.8 and beyond versions. They have a large library, it's typically quite high quality, and as I say, there's a good amount of 2.8 content. And some that I want to point out are made by Jonathan Lampel, and these are the Fundamentals of Digital Lighting in Blender course, and the Fundamentals of Blender Materials and Shading course. Now once again, Jonathan Lampel is quite well connected within the community, he's been producing content for a long time, so you can trust that the content he makes is well informed, very high quality, and that he knows exactly what he's talking about. But again, this is what I would call technique focus courses, so keeping that in mind, what do I mean by technique focus? Well after learning the fundamentals from any free or paid courses, you can focus your studies in different areas. Blender is large software, it's quite all encompassing, and it has many branches that touch different industries and fields of study. Just a few examples of this are motion graphics, sculpting, hard surface, texture painting, and Python scripting. Now for each of these fields of study, there is free and paid content available. There are lots of Blender creators on YouTube in the community, and many of them have already produced content for each of these, and we've already taken a look at some courses specifically for these, like Real-Time Motion Graphics by Midge. One I haven't mentioned is Mastering Sculpting in Blender by CG Boost for 2.7. This contains a lot of fundamentals that are still relevant, but again, because it's 2.7, you should be familiar with 2.8 and onwards before going back to it. Hard Surface Modeling in Blender by Gleb Alexandrov and Eddie Burrows. It's a very good course, it's done very well. But other people to take a look at on YouTube for hard surface content are Josh Gambrell, Master Xeon, and Machine as well. Those last two are add on developers. And add ons is a subject for a whole other video. Basically, there's a massive world of add ons for Blender, and they can massively speed up your workflows in different fields. And when comparing the differences between versions 2.8 and 2.9 of Blender, sculpting has undergone some massive improvements. Now as far as I can tell, it's too early for there to be any massive paid courses available to teach you all the new sculpting features that have appeared between 2.8 and 2.9, but I'm sure that will come in the future. But there definitely is some good YouTube content already teaching you how this works. So just be aware that this is a field that's undergone some massive improvements, but in terms of educational content, it's still an emerging subject. Now with regards to texture painting, this is an example of a field where Blender is fairly weak compared to other software. With that in mind, and depending on what you want to use Blender for, it may be worth investing in complementary software, for example Substance Painter, which is paid, but then there's also some free alternatives such as Quixel Mixer or Armor Paint. There's this nice video that appeared on the CG Boost channel done by Martin Kleckner that compares these three different softwares. So if you are interested in texture painting, but you don't want to use Blender and you don't have enough money for Substance Painter, then this video would be worth watching because it shows you a very visual example of texturing the same object in these three different softwares. Now again, if we've got to this point, we've assumed that you've learned the fundamentals, you've experimented with some either free or paid technique focused videos. So what do you do now? Well again I say make sure that you familiarize yourself with the new 2.9 features, because with a fundamental understanding of Blender, and after having experimented with different types of techniques, you will now be able to have a better understanding of the new features. With that in mind you may want to explore them in more detail. And there is of course some YouTube content available for that. 
So just a couple of examples, there's six huge features coming to Blender 2.9, it's a nice breakdown by Decoded, it's only five and a half minutes long. But if you want some more detail then Ask NK did a very good video breaking them down in a video that's 23 minutes long called Blender 2.90 released. That's not the whole title, there's a bit more but that should be enough for you to find it. I also did a very brief news video that's 4 minutes long where I point out some places where you can download some special resources, for example the splash screen file that comes with Blender made by Daniel Bystedt. I always think it's a good idea getting hands on with artistic projects made with Blender because I think this is a good way to learn how Blender systems work. Again we come back to the sky demo available on the Blender Cloud. Having very visual demos like this I think is a fast way to help with your learning because instead of having to go through trial and error to figure things out you can play around, have more fun and I think this helps with motivation. But anyway going back, so if we assume that you've learned the fundamentals, you've done some technique focused, you've experimented, you've figured out some subjects that you're interested in, you've taken a look at YouTube content, you've dived into more detail, you've played with some very visual things, where do you go from here? Well let's take a look up this branch. Oh, what's here? Oh, silly me, I must have left some of my videos here. Never mind, let's just go past them. You have the YouTube larger community. People that learn Blender fairly often get stuck into a cycle where they just can't escape new content. There's always something new being made and there's always something new to learn. And a certain number of creators, myself included, have made this part of or their entire job. If you want to dive deeper into learning Blender, you'll find a wide range of personalities available on YouTube. Some of them are freelancers, like Grant Abbott does freelance, so does Blender Binge and a whole host of other people. Some of them are business owners, like CG Boost. Some of them are just artists. Some of them are news reporters, Ask NK may fall under this category. Some of them are designers, I might put Ducky 3 d here. There's a limited amount of podcast content. Blender Nest specifically encapsulates Blender creators, so if you're interested in hearing more discussion type content then you might want to head over there. You'll also find programmers and people that work exclusively with add-ons. Pretty much everyone on YouTube likes to explore a variety of different subjects within their respective fields. So by subscribing to content creators and following what they make, you will be introduced to new fields of study that you may not have even known existed. So I say that if you're new to Blender, surround yourself with the larger community. Now this doesn't mean exclusively just YouTube, there are other great places you can find content, for example the Blender subreddit, or by creating a Twitter account there's a very strong presence for the Blender community on there. There's also Discord, pretty much every major Blender YouTuber has a Discord of their own. It's a place where viewers can come together, share their work, engage in challenges and competitions, and just have fun overall. So if you want to make your learning process a more enjoyable experience, then there's lots of stuff you can engage with. Now in my The Best Way to Learn Blender 2.8 video, I included a large list of different Blender creators, people that collectively provided a wide range of content for different techniques and workflows and subject matters within Blender. But I'm not going to do that in this video, instead I want to take the opportunity to give a shout out to smaller YouTubers. So people that might like to get a better footing in the Blender YouTube community, but just don't have a platform to share their content properly yet. So here they are. I've chosen four people, each of them under a thousand subscribers. First of all there's Feline Entity. You may recognize this name because I did a collaboration video with them, which is the stylistic grass one. They're also an add-on developer, they're quite proficient with code. And they have an interesting non-realistic rendering style. Then there's Sam Deham. I have massive thanks to give to Sam because he's a moderator on the Discord server and he has a very nice way of explaining things in his tutorial content. He hasn't been doing it for too long but I think if he sticks with it he'll go far. The same can be said for Sir Floof, probably the youngest one out of this entire list but someone that has repeatedly impressed me with their skill level. I recommend checking out some of their recent artwork and maybe sending them some encouragement. And then there's Gabe Bettini. They're a bit of a whiz kid with mathematics and nodes. If you haven't checked their content out already then you should check them out on Twitter and their YouTube channel. They recently released their first video on YouTube which is using only vector displacement to make the RTX 3080 GPU. Now when they originally shared the results some people thought they were faking it and that they had only modeled the GPU but no it's all done via nodes and if you want to see the amazing process behind that then you should check out their time lapse. So yeah that's the shout outs for this video. All of the links to everything I've talked about in this video will be in an associated blog post. So yeah, hopefully you found this interesting. If you are new to learning Blender, then just keep in mind that there is lots of content available. It's very easy to become overwhelmed and confused when looking at the content, especially if the tutorial content is made for different versions of Blender. So that's why I think you should keep in mind when the content was made. And if you're asking yourself, well, how do I know the difference between a tutorial made for 2.7, 2.8 and 2.9? Well, the easiest way to tell is from looking at the user interface. The interface of 2.79 and 2.8 are very different. 
So if you download Blender and open it and the tutorial looks similar to what you have in front of you, then there's good reason to think the tutorial is relevant to your current version of Blender. If the user interface is very different, it looks older and stale, then it's probably for a much earlier version of Blender. And in that case, as I say, you should probably focus learning fundamentals in the newer versions first, and then go back to the early tutorial to see if you can pull out important information. So with that being said, hopefully this video has taught you more about the learning content available for Blender across the internet. If there are any content creators or learning resources you want to share, then you can leave them down in the comments below. Also, if you're brand new to Blender, make sure to say hi. So thanks for watching everyone, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.